So Mike, can you share a bit more about Juniper's view on simplifying the network? Uh, I can. We, we actually have a simple five-step prescription, and it's not a very rigid prescription where you don't have to start at step one and go through the five steps. You can actually, your, your Monday morning initiative, you know, might actually start with step three. Um, you know, the first step is around consolidation and virtualization of security services because there's a lot of these uh, one RU appliances that are scattered through a data center. You know, as people opened up uh, a piece of an application process so that uh, they could have customers place orders or they could have their business partners provide material flow information, they, they had to secure that pinhole they created in the walled garden. Uh, if you can bring those together and parallel, parallelize the processing, uh, we crack packets once for multiple security processes. Well, you'll, you'll actually reduce the latency in, the, in that application flow. You'll also consolidate the number of things, which lowers power, space, and cooling. If you can take advantage in the second step of virtualizing things at the access layer, there's all these east-west data flows now in a data center. Old client server model, everything was north-south. It started from the server, went out to the user. And now you want to live migrate a server, it's an east-west data flow. Service-oriented architecture, lots of east-west data flows. And so by virtualizing the access layer, you actually eliminate a latency hop. That's one thing that's been vital to the overall architectural point of view that, you know, that New York Stock Exchange has had, is if you can take latency hops out of the server-to-server -server connectivity, you tighten up the, the coupling, you reduce the time in that process. Um, and that's something that we take advantage of with virtual chassis technology. Um, uh, the third step is simplifying the, the data center by collapsing a layer. Uh, we do that by having more reliable access devices, higher density core devices. Those are, this gets, rid of, gets rid of the two reasons why you have a layer in the middle, right? Fanning out the core was one reason, and segmenting problems that occurred at the access layer was the other reason. That gets rid of a lot of expensive ports, a lot of latency in the network, simplifies the design. The fourth is connect them together. Because you, if you've got this zone of servers over here, and you want to take a VM from that and you want to move it to another, another machine, it's more than likely going to be in a different data center. Because if it's for disaster recovery, it's not going to be in the same place. So if you want to have that layer two domain for that mobility, well, being able to share that across geographies becomes vital. And that's one thing we take advantage of with routing technology. And then the fifth step is just provide a single pane of glass around it all. Don't have swivel chair management. You want to be able to have one set of tools manages the network as an entity and allows you to complete IT business processes. If you want to configure VLAN, you shouldn't go box to box to box. You should say, I want a VLAN that's going to con you know, allow these servers to be in one broadcast domain. And those are simply the five steps we follow for data center simplification. I think um, the question that uh, a lot of CIOs are asking is, um, um, yeah, is in response to the, the demand from their, their CEOs, which is, will I, ever, will I need a data center anymore in the future? Or will I be able to do all my uh, IT in the cloud? And uh, you know, I think the simple answer to, to that is um, you know, the basic requirements that are driving private data centers today, which are around you know, speed, um, security, uh, and, um, um, you know, Keeping the, you know the, the users and the uh, and the um, and, and the servers and storage as close as possible together. None of those are going to change. Certainly, there is going to be more flexibility, uh, you know, as as Andy was saying, in terms of um, you know using facilities that that are available to cope with peaks and troughs. And there are some applications that make sense to be moved permanently into into the cloud. But um, you know the. I don't see the, the private data center disappearing. I just see it, uh, it changing in its nature. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. The, the private data center, provided it adds value to the corporation, will be there uh, for the foreseeable future. I mean, clearly, if you um, are sitting there and you can't figure out what the difference is between yourself and that external cloud, and they can do it better faster, well, then maybe your data center should be uh, spun down at that point. But for most organizations, the data center is there for a good reason, and it adds value in some way. In our world, it's about latency and throughput. That's the value add. That's not something you get from a more general purpose computing environment. So that's where we add value. In other businesses, it'll, it'll be different reasons. But as long as it adds value, the, uh, the data center will be there for the foreseeable future. OK, so even for your back office functions, you'd see outsourcing that sort of thing as into the cloud? The back office functions, depending on what it is, uh, you know, will uh, be probably moved out over time. 
uh, certainly the more uh, generic services, you know, email services. That's one of the first ones that comes to mind. I mean, pretty much anybody can run a good email service these days. Is that something you need to bring in-house? Probably not, unless, of course, your business is being in the email business. <laughs> then there's the value add. But for us, it'll be services like that that move out and continue to move out of the organization. And what's really good about that is it frees us up to focus on what we're good at and what we need to deliver. I think um, the nature of the market is going to change, though, because if you're a, a small and medium enterprise and you've been running you know, either a small data center or more likely you know, a, a few servers in a, in a conditioned cupboard in the corner of the office, um, there is absolutely no need to do that going forward because the same kind of um, capability can be made available to you um, remotely, um, cost-effectively and securely. So I, I think uh, it's only going to be the, the larger organizations for whom it will make sense to run their own data centers in the future. I would agree with that. And also, given that uh, bandwidth to the desktop is rapidly getting larger or desktop to small office, uh, bandwidth to the small office is increasing dramatically, it's much easier to say, I've got a general ledger and payroll system and I can outsource that because I can open up 10 screens in my office for the people that need to use it with no problem. Going back to the good old days when you had to try to make it fit on a 9.6 dial-up, well, there wasn't much you could do. Now, do you have an office that has less than 100 meg coming in to start, even on the smallest of offices these days? So it's very easy to provide robust services at the desktop. So to your point, uh, Phil, it's very easy to take that stuff out of the closet and just move it out. There's, there's no value in keeping that in your closet. 